What is up everyone? We are taking a little break from our home renovations to look for our next burr. So we are actually in a new neighborhood, a new town we don't typically invest in, but the market is hot. So we're expanding our criteria geographically. I'm very excited. This place looks super cute. You guys saw that we had been cold calling and because we were having problems finding properties within our price budget that made sense numbers wise. Um, this one is off the MLS and it would be just so fitting doing all that extra work and finding one on the MLS. They cut the electric to the house. Definitely needs a new front porch. <laughs> the two new garbage cans. Oh, it has a side yard. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. I didn't realize too. This tree's gotta go. Yeah. Huh. What's that? Uh, Maybe there vent. was a bigger back deck. No, it's a vent. It's a sewer vent for their sewer line. I don't know. Why what? is there like a support beam? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you guys giving it the bounce test? It is Dude, pretty bouncy. I wish he could stand. I feel like he, this is a blob, and if I jump here, he's going to like shoot up in the air. <laughs> but look at the high ceiling. Yeah, it is really cool. Like, it's pretty sick. really helping support the wall. <laughs> be like, I mean, my hand's outside. <laughs> Can three of us really be in this house at the same time? I think so. You could literally close your eyes and put that in more square. <laughs> that's really helping. I mean, that's, yeah, that's the f issues. What? This is what's holding the front of the house up. That beam sitting on dirt. That slanted beam sitting on dirt, and it's not even touching in one spot. Yeah, it's almost like they rebuilt the whole back of the house. Yeah. So you're not a fan? No, everything is soft. I mean, every floor is soft. And uh, every floor bounces. And whoever, like... It's like a barn more than a house yeah this window opening was big and look they just packed yeah, it in just a bunch of two by fours stacked instead on of, of each getting other. a window that yeah yeah or they're like oh we have this one in branding. storage we'll just make yeah. it work why wouldn't you just get a custom window and just have a whole big window okay look at all the natural light it is i mean it's <laughs> cool but like re realistically you'd have to get it for like twenty five thousand because you'd have to rip out all of the not really too much i mean i don't know if it's What's happening underneath us? Like there's no footing, there's no structural integrity. It's just a be beam sitting on dirt. We'd have to be a little creative, but I like a good challenge. Showing the house to a tenant. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, got, all right. And you just leave. Okay. <laughs> um, oh my God. I mean, I love a creative challenge, yeah. like spacing issues you could always fix, I feel. Yeah. Foundation was a little insane. We could obviously tell someone's done some work. They definitely redid work on it, yeah. So, like, that sort of stuff doesn't scare me as much. Um, but and it's like, and one of the things we're talking about a lot is like, do you make it a really functional two bedroom? Like, do you put a full bath upstairs and sacrifice a bedroom? Yeah. Or do you have a little quirky three bedroom? Obviously the ARV and the rent is higher for a three bedroom, but do you... But how much higher? Right, yeah. and like, is it now a less, des like, would you rather have a highly desirable two bedroom or a less desirable three bedroom? Yeah. You know? 
because if we sacrificed the if we sacrifice a bedroom on the third floor, there's room to do like a, a decent sized bathroom and then like a loft like office space yeah. where like if someone wanted a third bedroom for an office type space, that still exists. Yeah. But. The rental comps are going to answer that for us, I think. Oh, yeah. Because if it's not that much different, then I, I don't. See, but I don't know because then then we're talking renovation costs. Does it? Well, that's the thing. It's more the plumbing. two making it a nice two bedroom is more expensive yeah. than making it yeah. an awkward three bedroom. Yeah, I don't know. I wish I was there for like the planning talks of whoever did like the yeah. work on here. So we're gonna drive around a little bit, get a little sense of the area. We're probably gonna do some driving for dollars, take down some addresses and do some cold calling later. Yeah. And then we are so close to where we both went to college. So we're gonna hit up our old stopping grounds, go to the local bar, get some wings, and we're so excited. The wings are so good. We might even do a tower. It depends on how crazy we're trying to get. I don't know. Look how freaking cute this downtown is. I have never been through here. Super cute. This couldn't be. This looks like a Hallmark movie. It really does. A little bookstore. Wait, this is freaking adorable. Town Hall is adorable. The library. Damn. So actually, when we were heading out, we saw a gentleman walking out of a boarded up house with a drill under his arm. And I was like, Kai Kai, pull over. We got to chat with him. So we chatted with him, he's a flipper in the area, and he just gave us some good information, a good insight in the town, things to look out for. Um, gave us some insight on the house we just saw, why it hasn't sold in a while, and I don't know, it's just <coughs> nice to make connections like that. So we'll shoot him a text and hopefully we'll stay in touch and we'll see if we can help him out too. Now we're gonna get some brews, some wings, yeah, and take a look at our own stomping grounds. driving past the OG Deke house where I used to live. Right there, right on the corner right there. There it is. Look, we've never had a pink front door. I don't know what that is. What, sor is it a sorority now? Dude, I don't know what it is. Is it Sigma Alpha Epsilon? What the hell is that? It's Fiji. Oh no, Pike. What is this? Is it just like a multi-Greek house? I don't know. It's got every Greek flag, other than ours. And it used to be our house. Turn around. Wait, so I don't get it. I'm very confused. It is so built wow. up here. This is... It's so nice. Unbelievable. I want to be a student Me here. Me too. Can we get... Oh, I haven't got my Nashers yet. I haven't finished mine. We can just... Can we just come transfer. move here? Can we come move? Can we come house hack? Go. Not the worst idea we've ever had. Can you go past my house? I am. That's what exactly where I'm going. All right, we're going to drive past the two houses Dude, I lived in. Dude, oh my god. This house is completely gone. Yeah. Oh my god. The garage uh, is gone. Okay. I lived in... We should write this number down yeah. of this house. I lived in this house junior year. Yep. Five East New. Uh huh. And then I lived in this house senior year. Seven East New. How cozy. Cheers, baby. Bellies are full. And now, since we just toured a property, the next step is to analyze and figure out what we're going to offer. I kind of have to wait. Kyle hooked up his. What is it? PlayStation 1. PlayStation 1. And I'm playing Resident Evil Director's Cut. So, I'll let him get a round or two in and then we're going to analyze. Oh my god, I'm going to die. Alright, Kyle is done playing Resident Evil. So basically, what we usually do now is we split up. Logistically. We're physically together on the couch. But basically, I go through and I pull sold comps so I could figure out the ARV and rental comps so I could figure out what the property will rent for and then Kyle figures out the renovation budget 
then we run the analysis. That's right. That's what I'm doing right now. Do you want your laptop? My laptop's dead, so I'm gonna use my phone. Okay, so we ran the comps, and basically that just means that I made a little very simple Excel spreadsheet where I listed properties that sold, their square footage, what did they sold for, and then I added ours and, you know, did the math basically of what the ARV would be for our potential property. And then I did the same thing with past rentals. I did have our agent pull the rentals because I can't just Google those. And then what did you do with Reno? I ran it just based on the work that I knew was gonna have to be done, electrical, HVAC, and then finishes, and it is gonna need a new roof. So just based on the numbers that I know in my head on past properties, um, without obviously knowing inspections and things like that, just a rough estimate on what I believe that is Which gonna be. Which is about. what? Which is 60,000. $60,000. So then we're gonna head to the bigger pockets calculator because that is what we use. Potential burr. Okay, taxes are 4,000. Pretty good. Yeah. Do you want to start at 80? Let's start it at 80. After repair value, according to my ever so fancy comp sheet, is somewhere around 183, which I think is a little low. Yeah. Let's see, 185. Closing costs, we'd be using cash, private money, hard money. So the closing costs are going to be pretty cheap. It's like 2500 3500 But it's not it's not a normal closing. Like you're not paying lender fees, you know what I mean? Uh, um what are your estimated repairs? 60. Is that including a little buffer action? Yes. It's including buffer. But what's nice is that when we do the inspection, we're going to kind of have like our GC kind of walk it with us. Right. And we'll be able to ask him while we're there like 60,000, can we get this all done for it? Which yeah. I'm sure that he's gonna say yes. All right, refinance after, let's just say seven months. Rehab, let's say nine months, just for sake of. Uh, rehab time, three months, four months? Two, three. Three months. Yeah, it's a small place. All right, so our new loan amount would be, if the ARV is 185 mm-hmm. times 0.70, because it's 70% when we do the cash mm-hmm. out, be 129,500. Our new loan interest rate, I don't know, rates are going up. I'm gonna do 4.5 to be safe. And then other closing costs and lender fees. So we're gonna be borrowing all of this money. We're gonna spend about seven grand in private money fees, amortize over 30 years. Next step. All right, rent. Compared to other rentals in the area, we're pretty confident we can get 1700. Tenant pays all utilities and we bill back water sewer. Insurance is gonna be like 125. Vacancy, seven. We're renovating the home pretty nicely, so I'm gonna do five, five. And then we do do property management because I like getting paid. Calculate. All right, as is at $80,000, it cash flows $177 a month with a 10.65 cash on cash return, but we'd be leaving $20,000 in the deal and we're not doing that. No. So do we just like get up, walk away and not put in an offer? No. We go back, edit the report, drop it from $80,000 to $60,000 and analyze it again. And what does that do? Cash flow stays the same, but the cash on cash return turns to infinite, which is a beautiful thing. And we have zero dollars left in the deal. So it seems 60,000 is kind of like the sweet spot. I think yes. We well, also- wait, Well, hold on, because we need to take out the, the loan fees. So I would really go down another 7,000. You know what I mean? Yeah, Ooh. so that doesn't come out of our pocket. Yeah, so I would put, this back down to like 53. 53. I don't think 53 is a horrible number to offer on that place. Not at all. I I still think that's high. I mean, I think so too. I think I would want more of a renovation buffer. Yeah. I mean, what if we just offer 50? Yeah. 
All right, I think we got an offer price. We're gonna marinate on it a little bit, but the next step is you need a proof of funds when you're submitting an offer. So I'm gonna reach out to our private lender. They'll send me a letter and then we have to submit that when our offer. And this house is pretty out of whack. So we're definitely gonna do an inspection contingency. Absolutely. It was, somebody started doing work on it and there was a lot of new foundational work that had been done. So something that I definitely want to do is go take either a drive or a call to the construction office mm. and just see like what the the permit history is, if there's any outstanding failures. I could do it online. You could submit an OPRA request. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. exactly remember what that stands for. Open public record request, yep, right? Yep. Something like that. Um, we did that when we bought this house and it just gives you some good insight on the history of the home, what work was permitted. Yeah, there like were that. some permits in the window. So that's definitely something that we want to do a due diligence to make sure that there's not some crazy foundational issue that we don't know about or see. Yep. So let's, we're gonna gather all that together and we'll get back to you in a second. Good morning, friends. It is a new day and it is cold, but we did take Bodhi for a walk, which was amazing because look how tuckered out he is, which is always the goal. A nice safari, a little exercise and tire him out. We left you off last night after we got finished analyzing the deal and we got the proof of funds and I feel like we kind of gloss over that term a little bit. And I'm gonna share what exactly that means and how you can get it. So proof of funds is literally just a document that shows proof that you have the funds to buy the property. If you're using a conventional loan, this is your pre-approval letter. And if you're buying it in cash, this is a letter from either your private money lender, your hard money lender, or a bank statement to show that you have the cash in your account. And this is why it's so important that if you're gonna use hard money or private money to have conversations with these people prior to actually having a deal in place, because you need to have proof of funds quick. And then that's really it. You just shoot the proof of funds over to your agent or to whoever's submitting the offer for you and they hand it in with the offer. So the property was listed for $89,999 or something like that, basically 90 grand. After doing our analysis and seeing all the work that had to be done and all this stuff, we ended up offering 45,000 cash with an inspection contingency. Can you tell me how a property can sit on the market for almost 100 days and then we get interested, put an offer, and then they have multiple offers? Yep. How does that happen? So basically what happened is we submitted our offer and our agent responded and said that they have multiple offers in and they're asking for highest and best. After 100 days. So we went up $5,000, went up to 50 grand, said that was our highest and best, and drum roll please. Our offer did not get accepted. We are not the father. <laughs> so, that sucks. We have not had to really grind and dig for a deal since we started investing. We've never like, had to try like this hard now. before. This is crazy. <laughs> the whole point of hiring at next door is that we could have more time to look for deals, which we're doing, but it's not producing results and it's just getting a little frustrating and it's deflating, like it's not motivating. You know, it's a new year, 2022, and normally we would have this like retreat and set all these goals and like, we're just not super motivated right now, but we're not gonna give up. Gonna not for out. lack of trying. We've, we've toured, analyzed, put, put offers in, but you know, I feel like it always comes in waves and everyone always says that, like you, you're gonna go yeah. through a dry spell, you're not gonna have any deals, and then all of a sudden you're gonna have like, five offers accepted. Yes, every so. no leads to the next yes. So on that note, if you guys are also struggling in this insane market, like the video and comment below and tell us. I think we all share so many highlight reels on social media. It's good to share the slumps as well. And, and I know we are definitely not alone out there. So other people are struggling to find deals and yeah. And if, and if know. we're not alone, then subscribe to this channel so we could all just grudge through this together. <laughs> all right, guys, we'll see you in the next one.